madness. These are sentient creatures. We are treating them like industrial commodities. No one has ever eaten this stuff before. We're all guinea pigs. The latest manifestation of this madness uh, is the recent decision by the FDA to allow the sale of meat from cloned animals. Now the FDA and the USDA are our top food safety uh, organizations, but they really are simply branch offices of the big meat packing companies. The first animal was cloned roughly 10 years ago. It was a sheep. It was really a bad health. And studies of clones have found that in their early, early years, they are very, a, a large proportion of them are unhealthy. A small proportion of them ever reach maturity. There may be, even among those who appear healthy, subtle, subtle <coughs> genetic damage that we don't know anything about. The FDA has ruled that the meat from cloned animals is indistinguishable from the meat from other animals, and therefore, it doesn't need to be labeled. So the meatpacking industry will be able to sell you the meat from clones without having to label it. Again, knowledge is power. They know that if it's on the label, people don't want to eat it. But it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more efficient for them. So I was invited a few weeks ago by the Los Angeles Times to go to a really fancy restaurant in Los Angeles where the chef was going to make a meal from some beef uh, from a cloned animal. And I'm a runner. And I swear, I would rather eat one of my old running shoes <laughs> than eat that meat. And not because I know that it's dangerous. I don't know that it's dangerous. It may turn out to be just fine. But to me, there is no better symbol of this mentality, of this obsession with uniformity and conformity and control than a clone. It's perfect. So what's been the impact on us, on us as eaters of this system? Well, in the same years that they were applying science and technology to our food in an unprecedented way, there's been a rise in foodborne illness. Same 30 to 40 year period. Um, you would think that as the latest science was devoted to food preparation, the food would become more safe. But these gigantic, centralized, industrialized systems are ideal for taking a very dangerous pathogen and spreading it far <laughs> and wide quickly. Uh, it used to be that ground beef came from a small butcher shop or a small processing plant. So if you got a hamburger 30 or 40 years ago, that one hamburger patty probably contained pieces of one cow, one steer, maybe a couple. The typical fast food hamburger patty, just one of those quarter pounders, contains pieces from hundreds, if not thousands, of different cattle. And with some fast food hamburgers, those cattle may have come from as many as five different countries. So the hamburger of 40 years ago might look like the hamburger of today, but they're different things. And this industrial commodity thing of today can give you all kinds of diseases, potentially. Why is that? Well, you know, here's the disgusting analogy. Uh, if you are in a monogamous relationship with your partner, and both of you have been faithful for years, the odds of there being a sexually transmitted disease is extremely low. Faithful, monogamous years, you're probably not going to have a problem. On the other hand, if you are sleeping with a thousand people a day, <laughs> for days, good chance you're going to have a problem. <laughs> And that fast food hamburger is the culinary equivalent of that kind of sexual promiscuity. Now, what's in the burger that makes you sick? Well, it's that manure. The cattle live in the manure. The cattle go into the slaughterhouse. Some of the manure is on their hide, or some of their stomach contents uh, spill onto the meat. 
and it winds up in your burger. In the book, I describe it simply, shit in the meat. <laughs> that shit contains all kinds of stuff, like this new form of E. coli, 015787, very bad for you. There's now an antibiotic-resistant salmonella being spread by ground beef, very bad for you. And the real innovation of the past year has been, yeah, there's shit in meat, there's also shit in spinach and in the lettuce. Because we are industrializing our production of lettuce and spinach along the fast food lines. And because the runoff from our feedlots and from our pastures where these industrial cattle are being raised is getting into our spinach. Um, and it's actually a very similar way that this bacteria could be spread by these bagged le lettuces and, and bagged spinach. It used to be you buy a head of lettuce. Maybe it would be contaminated. Most likely it wouldn't be. You were just confronted with one head of lettuce. Today, uh, the convenience of having someone wash your lettuce for you and bag it for you may just be the ideal way to sicken you. Because now you have thousands of heads of lettuce essentially being washed in one big sink. And that may be just a perfect way to take this bacteria, spread it to all the lettuce, neatly package it, and ship it not only all over the country, but also overseas. Now, you would think, who would come up with the idea of doing this? What was the fast food industry? The fast food industry pioneered the pre-washing and bagging of lettuce. Why? They didn't want to have to pay people to do it in the restaurant. It was cheaper. It was faster. It seemed more efficient. But if you get sick and poisoned by it, maybe it's not so efficient. Maybe it's not so cheap. So even if this food does not sicken you the moment you eat it, it's amazing how unhealthy Americans have become in exactly the same period that this industry has grown. Uh, in the same way you can chart the rise in foodborne illness, you can chart the rise in obesity in this country to the early 1970s as the fast food industry really, really began to grow. Uh, two thirds of all Americans right now are obese or overweight. And in the last 30 years, the obesity rate among preschoolers has doubled. And the obesity rate among children aged 6 to 11 has tripled. Well, how could this be? Well, the fast food industry is targeting very young children with very unhealthy food. They are targeting pre-verbal children. Both McDonald's and Burger King have done marketing campaigns with Teletubbies. Teletubbies are these PBS characters that don't speak, <coughs> that are aimed at children too young to speak, children who are eight months old, nine months old, and Burger King has even sold chicken nuggets, really high fat, unhealthy chicken nuggets, shaped as Teletubbies. Uh, the fast food industry has created marketing agreements with all the major Hollywood studios, the TV networks, all the major cartoon characters, leading sports stars, pop stars, and they aim at children for two reasons. Ray Kroc was very clear in his memoirs why he started a market to kids. It was because, and by the way, he never had any kids. It wasn't that he loved kids, it was that the average check size was higher <coughs> when a child was involved in a restaurant visit. Because a small child didn't go to a restaurant by himself or by herself, if there was a child coming to the restaurant, there was always at least one adult, maybe a sibling, maybe a family. The other reason they decided to uh, target children is because eating habits are being formed young, very young. Um, and if you can get people to like this food at a very early age, most likely um, they will have it for the rest of their life. 